A big part of why I got into photography to begin with is because I couldn't draw or paint. And so Photoshop and digital photography ended up really being a great spot for me. Now, as it turns out, a lot of people want to know how to turn a photograph into a painting. And luckily, Photoshop gives you a lot of different ways to do that. I wanted to show you a couple of my favorites. So here we have a portrait, and this is the first image that we're going to start with. Now, with both of these techniques, I'm going to show you quick ways to go from a photo to a painting. There are a lot of much slower, much more detailed, brush-based ways. Both of these are intended to be really fast. So the first thing we want to do with this portrait is fix it up a little and open up the details in the eyes. Now, normally, I'd be really worried about ruining the file and creating halos, but in that we're going to make this a painting, I want to have some fun with it and kind of trash the file as we go. So I'm going to use a couple of techniques I don't normally use. One is shadow highlight, which is really powerful, but it does create halos and it does create artifacts. Again, that's okay because we want this to be surreal. So now I can see his eyes. The other thing I'm going to play around with is HDR toning. And this is a way of getting sort of a crunchy HDR aesthetic without using multiple images. And the effect that I'm after here is with detail. This is really similar to using clarity. In fact, we can go even further with it here than we could with clarity. The image is really crunchy and really surreal. It almost looks like a painting before I've even done anything to it. At this point, I'm going to duplicate the layer because as I apply a filter effect, I want to blend them. And now with that layer duplicated, I'm going to come up here to my filter gallery. Again, this isn't a place that I normally go, but for this aesthetic, it's really powerful. I've got a lot of different features I can use here. We're going to go with watercolor. I'm going to keep that shadow intensity really low because I want to protect his eyes. I could play around with the texture and see how that's going to affect the image. That looks nice, and I want to keep the detail up so I can see some of the photographic detail. I'm going to click OK, and it definitely looks different now. It will look even more different as I change my blend modes. I could do uh, lighten, or in this case, I want to go with overlay. And just to toggle that, you can see it really changes the look and feel of it. Now at this point, I might cut down the opacity a little bit. And I think I'd like to add a layer mask and cut through so I can see his eyes a little bit better. So I'll just grab my paintbrush and I'm going to set it to gray, which I've already done here, so that I can just cut through a little bit. I'm going to use my control option or control alt keys to get the brush the size that I want and just click on there to cut through that mask. So if we revert here, that's where we started and that's where we ended up. Pretty dramatically different. Um, we've really changed the look and feel of this portrait. Okay, for this next image, I want to show you a technique using Camera Raw. And the benefit in Camera Raw is we could save a preset or we could sync files so that we can apply the effect to a lot of different images. It's not as significant of a change, uh, but it is really fun. So in CC, I can just pop into Camera Raw as a filter. Prior to CC, if you wanted to open non-RAW files, you'd want to set the preference to open JPEGs or TIFFs in RAW. And what we want to do here is make the file look kind of ridiculous. Bump the saturation way up, add some contrast, maybe open up the shadows a little bit. That looks good. It already almost looks like a painting because it's so surreal. And the next touch is to come over here and max our noise reduction and minimize the detail. And everything gets really, really soft. Now, the last thing to look at, let's just zoom in a little here, is the effect that clarity has. And it gives it a two entirely different looks. If I go to the left, it's going to further soften the image. It really does look like a painting when I do that. If I go to the right, it's going to throw in some mid-tone contrast. Still looks like a painting, but with more detail in it. So for the sake of this tutorial, think of the clarity slider as detail, much like HDR toning before. Now when I'm done here, if I wanted, I could save this as a preset and apply that to other files, or I could sync this file with other files. If I were to use a lesser version of this, it's a great way to remove uh, artifacts with skin or noise. So you can go anywhere in between with either one of these effects and pretty dramatically change your images, make your photos look more like paintings, or stop anywhere along the line.